Welcome to the second statistical inference video. Once again, we're going to be going rather quickly. The first one was about Aunt Belinda and her coin. She had 20 coins. This time, we're going to do a different sort of problem. We're going to be comparing two groups. Aunt Belinda wasn't doing that, and this will make us use scrambling. So this is a different sort of problem, the same principle. We're going to look at 10-year-olds. What do you know about 10-year-olds? They're in fifth grade, stuff like that. But for this problem, we're going to notice that for 10-year-olds, girls are taller than boys. And now we have to ask the important question, how much taller? So let's go right to Fathom. Here's a collection of 162 10-year-olds we imported from NHANES. We've got height, weight, age, stuff like that. Let's make a graph of our data. So here's a graph. I'm going to make it wide because I've thought about it before. There's the height of everybody. It's in centimeters. I'm going to put sex on the vertical axis. Now, when we look at this, it's not obvious that the girls might be taller than the boys because these distributions overlap quite a bit. So I'm going to use plot value. I'm going to put the mean right on the graph. And now you can see that the girls, on average, are in fact taller than the boys. Let's go back to the slides and talk about this. The girls are taller. How much taller? Well, every one of those little ticks is about two centimeters. So if we look at the difference of means, one answer is about three centimeters. Another way of looking at it is to look at the ratio of means. If we do that, we can see that the girls are about two percent taller. That's three centimeters in 150. 150 centimeters, by the way, is a little under five feet. So now we're ready to look at the next question. And that, of course, is can chance explain the difference? Could it just be the random assignment of the boys and the girls gave rise to a difference that is this large? The way we're going to find out, of course, is through scrambling. The details were in the Simulation 3 video, so you can look back at that. We'll go through it quickly here and see what happens next. First thing I'm going to do is create the measure that we're looking at. We're going to use difference of means. So I double click this and go to the measures panel where I'm going to create a new measure called the height, which stands for difference in height. And then I'll double click the formula box to get my formula editor. And here's our final formula. And if I click OK, I see this value 2.8821 centimeters, which is about the three centimeters that we guessed from the graph. Let's be sure to remember this because this is our test statistic. This is the difference in reality. When we do the scrambling, we're going to be looking at fantasy. We're going to be looking at the simulation. So remember 2.8821. Now I'm going to scramble, not sample. I do scramble attribute values. If I look under here, I can see this is the scramble 10-year-old collection. I've already scrambled by sex, which is correct. And so I could look at that, but I'm just going to go directly onto the measures. I'm going to do collect measures. And this time I will make the graph of the measures. Put D height on the horizontal axis. And notice they all happen to be positive this time, so I'll give it a little room to grow. Go back to the collect measures panel. I'm going to change it to a thousand measures. Replace the existing cases. Turn off animation. Do collect more measures. And let's watch that distribution grow. We can see it getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And what was that value we were supposed to remember? 2.88. Let's do plot value and put it on the graph. 2.88. There's the value. Did get some cases that were more extreme. I'm going to go ahead and select a bunch of them, put my cursor over the collection, and it says 7 out of 1,000 cases were at least as extreme as my test statistic. Let's think about what that means. Remember that scrambling makes it so there is no relationship between sex and height. And that's what this graph shows. If there were no relationship between sex and height, it's rare that you'd get a 2.88 centimeter difference. How rare? That's the empirical probability. The probability that d height is greater than or equal to 2.88, and that's 0 .007, 7 out of 1,000. Let's look at it with our inference vocabulary. The null hypothesis is that there is no relationship between height and sex. 
The sampling distribution is shown in the picture. It's the distribution of the measure d height. But remember, that's a fantasy. The reality is the test statistic. The value from reality d height is 2.88. So the p-value is the chance that if there were no relationship, you get a result as extreme as the test statistic, and that p-value is 0 0.007, which is very small. So we reject the null hypothesis. It's less than 0.05. Let's think about exactly what that means. We reject the idea that there is no relationship between sex and height. It's sort of a double negative. What that really means is there is a relationship. We can't be absolutely sure. There's still that 0 0.007, but the smaller that number is, the more certain we are of our conclusion.